Hey, come on already. Say, you, you, you are telling me to come on already. You, you are telling me to come on already. You, you. Yeah. All right. Hello there, I'm Scotty, you're not, one minute of farting around later, welcome to To Be Horror Weekend 5, that's a 5, Roman numeral 5 baby, long time coming, I'm out of breath from dancing so much, so you know what, I'll be right back. All right, got a drink. So, the first stop on this um, uh, on this trip in the To Be Horror Weekend, uh, we're gonna talk about Alligator from 1980, starring Robert Forster, Robin Riker, and directed by Louis Teague. And um. So, let me just explain to you guys how this came about. So, you guys know I've been wanting to do To Be Horror Weekend 5 for a long time. Keep putting it off, keep putting it off, keep putting it off. You know, uh, but the good thing I did. There's quite a bit. I have a list of like 17 movies I can do. I don't know, don't know if I'll do all of them, but there's a great deal of movies <clears throat> that are on there. So, I think I'll wait until a decent time. So, uh, Sequel of Thon 3 is coming. That's going to start Monday. I'm hoping I can get through all 20 of those movies in a week. <clears throat> we shall see. But I'm hoping. I'm on vacation next week. So, I'm hoping I can do that. And being, I'm, being that I'm on vacation next week. Hold on. <sighs> Being that I'm on vacation next week, I figured I have a big three-day weekend, more so. Well, I don't te I technically have to go to work tomorrow, or today, as you've seen this. This is going to premiere, or come be live on the channel at midnight. So, yeah, it's a little early for some it's a little late if this is Thursday, a little early if it's Friday, so <clears throat> either way. But I want to get an early start. I'm going to try to do two movies today that I'm filming. And you'll get one now at noon, and hopefully, if I went through with it, there'll be another one at 8 a.m. for you guys to check out for me to do, for me to review for you. But I came up with this idea, so it first started that I wanted to do... The sequel of Thon 3, I said, I'm, I'm on vacation next week, I'm going to do it. I was going to do it, oh, starting over the weekend, just go through. There are some movies, well, it's now a couple movies that I'm waiting on to be delivered in the mail that could come tomorrow, could come Saturday. <clears throat> that's fine if they do. And then I, I decided, you know, I could do it to be, uh, you know, I'm going to do the goosebump -a -thon this weekend. And then something struck in my head. You technically have a three-day weekend. I only have to, supposedly, hopefully, fingers crossed, I only have to clean at the fair tomorrow. See, I work on a janitorial crew. And when the fair comes to my town, for some fucking reason, the guy in charge decides, has decided for like five years now, maybe more, that janitorial has to go out and help clean not the whole fairgrounds, just some of the buildings, the bleachers, uh, stuff like that, like the, the bleachers in the pig building, the grandstand, stuff like that, and everyone hates it, and last year, he even said he wasn't going to do it anymore, well, he's full of shit, because we did it again, and I'm not doing very good, the first day I went out there, I know this is not about the movie, we're, first, first day I went out there, yesterday, right, I'm go, trying to go, I'm in the grandstand, they're metal bleachers, I try to go up so I can grab this pile of stuff to put in the garbage, Bing my knee right on a. I, I misjudged my depth perception and bing my knee right there. Hurt like hell. 
her leg out. Hurt when I hit it right then. And then, today, we're cleaning the pig building, right? And I'm sweeping down. And when as I was going down, I misjudged where I stepped. And scraped my leg. I look better than it did this morning. I scraped my leg. So, you know, hopefully I don't kill myself tomorrow trying to step off of something again. It's two days in a row now. I'm not happy for a third one, but here's the situation. When COVID happened, right? We went down from having a four-man crew to the rule is only three people at a time because it spreads out in the van. So usually we have our days off. Well, they didn't give us any days off, but those who are left behind to help clean the uh, grandstand get to go home early. Did this last year. So my, my coworker, Josh, he stayed there to do it. And uh, he had another job to do. But I'm going to stay behind to help tomorrow. And in theory, I should, it means I go home early tomorrow. And he, my supervisor even said, because I have vacation, that's what it is. So we're seven minutes and I get to talk about the movie. But that's how it is. So I figured I had this long weekend. And if I already get two reviews out of the way, then there it is. That's already started by the time I get home, right? And whether I want to do another one or take a quick nap ski when I get home, it's up to me. You know. And Big LT and the Grovey aren't coming over for smacking down tomorrow. They came over at NXT's on Tuesday because Big LT is going home to see his dad. And so that's not going to happen. Uh, but uh, so there's that. So, I decided to start with a 1980 film that is probably overlooked until the 4K came out last year. Alligator. Uh, it stars Robert Forster as this cop who is trying to track down this giant alligator that lives in the sewers of Chicago. And the whole story, it's, it's basically this, the urban legend of a baby alligator gets flushed down the toilet, goes into the sewers, grows up, gets big and eats people. That's basically what it is. Although they add a little more, uh, they put a little stank on it with these, it's eating genetically modified animal carcasses to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? So, yeah. And so Robert Forster is investigating this and trying to figure out what's going on. And no one believes him, of course, when they say he's a giant alligator because those things don't believe in the sewer. There's even this, uh, animal lady who doesn't believe him played by robin Riker. her name is melanie or something like that i don't know uh but here's the thing so it starts out with this girl teenager girl who is uh maybe younger than a teenager maybe like 12 13 who wins this baby alligator or gets this baby alligator from some fair and she brings it home and her dad finds out and flushes it down the toilet. And they tell her that it died. Right? And so that is the catalyst for this. And there's this company that is, um, you know, genetically modifying animals. They're, med they're you know, they're basically animal mistreatment. Right? Anim you know, and it, they're disposing of the carcasses into the sewer. The alligator's eating them. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what it is. Uh, when uh, uh, Robert Forster plays uh, uh, David Madison, who's a detective. And he's on this case trying to figure out what is going on. And he connects with this woman, played by Robin Riker, who we later find out is the girl. And maybe my biggest problem with this movie is they never connect that. You people at home, us watching at home get that connection, but they never connected on screen because she's been told that the alligator died. And I was for sure the scene where uh, he meets her mother was where was it, it was going to all come out. Where, where, where like she, the mother hears them mention the alligator. And she said, oh yeah, alligator. I remember she had a baby alligator. Your father flushed it down the toilet. What? I thought, I thought you said he died. 
No, he just said that. He flushed it down the toilet. And so they could connect that. Maybe that's the same alligator. They can live that long, especially if it's eating the genetically modified animals. But they never connect it. There's no connection. It's just, no, there's no callback to that, except for us. There's no connection to that. You know, you just, you just, you find out she's the grown up version of that character, and then, well, then. Robert Forster is really good in the role. And Robin Riker, okay, I always known her as a mother type character. She was the mom on Brink. And she, she was in Step Monster, which is a movie I haven't seen since I was a kid. It stars Alan Thick as this guy who's getting married to a woman who's like a monster or something. I don't remember. But she's the Step Monster. And I don't know. I can't. I don't know if that's, if that's even on YouTube. If it is and it stays on YouTube until February 8th, that, that's going to be one I cover for, for that. Cause that is like Gnorm the Gnome for me of. Movies I watched once and never found them again. I don't even know where I watched this. I don't think Step Monster was a Disney Channel thing, but I know Gnorm the Gnome was. But, or, or a, a Gnome named Gnorm. Whatever. But, or Upworld as it's called, as it was called on Tui. But, I have to look for that. because That would be something I'm interested in reviewing. All these years later. I've only seen it once. And it's one of those movies you watch when you're a kid. And you see once. And you just get never found it again until you're older. There's, there's quite a few of those. You know. But. <clears throat> uh, uh, I found out later. That the that the Louis Teague. Is associated with. Was associated with Roger Corman. Which explains a lot of this film. It's very. It's very Corman-esque. Uh, there, but there's not like Corman stuff traits. Like there's no tits. You see a little bit of Robin Riker's left booby here, but that's about it. And it, it it's funny because he's like, you know, I don't want to go out to dinner. I'm gonna be nervous if I don't know you're gonna stay the night with me, you know. And so it cuts. They kiss and it cuts to another scene. It comes back and they're in bed. They had sex, and then. Uh, they go out to dinner. They didn't have dinner yet. They go out to dinner, and they, you know, after having, finding out that one of this guy, Brock, was killed by the alligator, then he's in a bad mood. So she leaves anyway, and it's like, so he got laid, and she still didn't stay the night. So they went out to dinner, she still didn't stay the night, but he got laid anyway, so it's kind of a win-win thing, but... He does apologize to her the next day. She still lives with her mother. It seems like her mother is senile, which is a weird way to go. Which, you know. That's another way they could have went about it, too. Or, oh, my mother. My, my dad kept saying that he, you know. My mother kept saying that she, you know, he flushed it down the toilet. But she, he insists that he died. That it died. And maybe they needed something for it to, like there was a scar or something on it. On the alligator that indicated it was the same one or something, but they never do that. It's just it's a little. Bit... There's also this this guy, the chief, who's going around with him for part of the movie, and then he like he fires him at some point. He figures out that there's a connection to this lab, and he begins investigating this lab. He goes back, he tells the chief. Chief says, uh, "You're off the case. You're fired," because people in charge of the lab called the chief and got him fired. Now, if I was the chief, I would sit there going, no, I think they called the mayor, and the mayor called him, but still, I'd be like, you know, the mayor called me about your investigation. He thinks you're going too far. I'm supposed to fire you. There's something here, though. And then at the end, like he's like, what? I never doubted you. And it's like, yeah. As for gore, there's some gore in here, like the... Dude's leg gets bit off. You see a little bit of that. Most of it is just big and then cut away. It didn't have that big of a budget, I guess. But it's fine for 1980. I wasn't expecting anything spectacular. This wasn't deep into the 80s, like 85 or 86, where he, they had some of the stuff. 
before the MPAA went nuts. This is early 80s horror. And we're still a bit tame. I mean, this was the same year the Friday the 13th came out. So maybe this was before Friday the 13th. And then I saw Friday the 13th and went, yo, we need to do stuff like that. Which, you know. And then you got stuff like the wrath scene in the burning. And then so on and so forth. Until the MPAA decided, no, we're going to be dicks. And cut every single bit of gore out of the movie, even though it's all fucking fake. And then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna run YouTube, or we're gonna influence YouTube to, you know, copyright stuff, or not copyright, but block stuff because of gore that we know is fake, but we're still gonna be dicks and block it anyway. No offense to you two, I'm just saying. I never had that problem, but I've seen a lot of other creators where they're like, oh, YouTube blocked our video because of the graphic. We had to blur everything. Like, like sometimes I have to really go in and blur it. Because they just didn't think any gore, even though everybody watching knows it's from a movie, so it's fake. But they, they, just, they just, I don't know. It's too graphic. Anyway, I never had that problem because I don't do clips or anything. Which comes down to the fact that I, I don't have anything to edit with. But also, it's it's easier for me to sit here and talk about the movie. So ultimately, they, they blow up the alligator. And this was foretold, I figured it out earlier. Earlier, towards the beginning of the movie when... David starts investigating, he's like, methane. And I'm like, well, they're going to blow, blow it up. Well, that alligator's going to... No, I said, well, that alligator's going to get blown up. So it is. He sets a little bomb thing. He steals from evidence. <laughs> evidence lockup. After he's fired, he goes into evidence lockup, takes a couple things, and he's going to take this thing down. And you know how they build up tension at the end that, that he's going to get out? Not just him trying to climb up for it, explodes no he's trying to climb up and he pushes up the manhole and some lady parks on top of it and then you have to have robin Riker come in and yell at this lady to move and she doesn't want to move so she gets in there and she moves the car anyway but it's weird because she she said just back up but she gets in the car and she drives forward <laughs> but he gets out with like two seconds left and the thing explodes and it clearly blows like the whole cementation, everything, just pfft, sky high. But towards the end of the movie, it ends with them putting the, the manhole cover back on. And it's like, well, no, 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 no. I saw that explosion. They blew that thing to kingdom come. There's no manhole left to cover after that thing blew up. But, you know, movie. And it ends with another baby alligator being dropped into the sewer, which I'm assuming was the one that the guy earlier in the film was trying to sell could be I don't get it going down the tube but it got flushed what are the chances another one is flushed down the toilet unless it's that same one and they just did it to, I don't know it doesn't make any sense be animal cruelty again it doesn't make any sense what it should have been is they find an egg like this this alligator laid an egg <clears throat> Maybe during the film, David finds eggs and he smashes them, but but misses one, right? Kind of like Godzilla 98, you know. There's one left. <clears throat> but, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was fine. I'm going to give it a middle of the road. It was, it was better than I thought it was going to be, but not as good as it could be. You know, it's 80s schlock. It's still, it was 19th, so it was still a little 70s-ish. Like with, like, the... The cinematography and even like some of the music and the feel and even the dress. It was 1980. Kind of like you get to 1990, everyone is still like dressed like it's 80s, right? And then you get to uh, 2000 and it's still kind of ni late 90s-ish. So like when you get to the end of a decade, at the beginning of a decade, it's still kind of like the later years of the previous decade. So even though it's 1980, it still feels like the late 70s. But that's fine. You know. Uh, but yeah. I, I liked it for what it was. There was a sequel. Which came out 11 years later. 
which kind of works because it took 12 years, you know, because the alligator gets dropped down the sewer, and then it's 12 years later that this whole thing has happened. So it kind of works. So, yeah. But uh, what are your thoughts on alligator? If you want to comment, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, so it starts. I uh, can't wait to keep going with this. Uh, but yeah, so thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.